All right, boys and girls, welcome back to uh, If It Would Have Been Snowing an Hour Earlier, We Wouldn't Have to Be Doing This Right Now version of the drive through uh, We are in 13.4, and we are doing problem number one. Okay, it says, find the mass of the lamina described by the inequalities, given that the density function is rho, this cursive P, is rho, I think. Yeah, it's Greek. Rho of x, y is x comma y. It's totally okay if you don't understand any of this, but you're going to have to stay with us or you're not going to have a chance this, this uh, chapter. Okay? And then our inequalities, it says x goes from 0 to 4 and y goes from 0 to 3. So this thing right here is our lamina. Now the first thing we have to do to have a chance at understanding what the heck we're doing is understanding what a lamina is. Those of you that are good at physics are going to have the hardest time with this. How do we find mass? How do we find mass? We take density times volume. Right? How much of something is there? And how dense is that thing? Well, here's what's confusing. Don't think of this like a rectangle. Think of it like a rectangular piece of plywood. Do you guys know what plywood is? So it's a lamina is an, an area piece that has a uniform density of 1. Sorry, a uniform height of 1, height of 1, height of 1. So it just so happens that the volume of this lamina is the same as the what? As the area. If you can understand that, you will do much better in this section. Okay, now, the density of this little piece of plywood section is xy. So where is the density of this lamina at its greatest? Top right. Very good. Up here, it's really thick. It's, it's 12 units of density there. And how dense is it at the origin? It's not dense at all. So this is what I really like about this. We are about ready to do a problem that until now seemed like we were doing volume. And what we do in calculus is we do too much area and volume. And you guys think, look, I don't really care about the volume of this thing. But we can do so much more. All we got to do is reinterpret our variables. So now I want you to think of this, the mass of this thing is just going to be the area of the region times the density. Density is mass times volume, but density, I'm sorry, mass is density times volume. In this case, we're going to do density times area because it just so happens to work out that our area has the exact same quantity as our volume because we're talking about laminas. So far, so good? All right. So it's going to be the integral as x goes from 0 to 4, y goes from 0 to 3. Our Density function is xy, and we've got this dy dx. The, we're going to have to do calculus pretty fast today, so I apologize for that. But luckily, we've been doing these enough that you should be able to keep up. Okay, it, the dy dx, dx dy for this one wouldn't matter. It's both rectangularly and vertically simple. Oh, and the order of xy doesn't matter either. Um, okay, so that's x squared, or sorry, x y squared over 2 from 0 to 3. So it's the integral from 0 to 4 of 9x over 2 dx. So it's 9x squared over 4 as x goes from 0 to 4. So 16, uh, so it's 36. 
And what do we find? What do we find there? 36 what? Units of mass. Units of mass. Okay. So this is why I chose to put this problem on the on the Blackboard site. We just did something that felt like we were calculating the volume. But just because we decided to switch our interpretation of our function, we didn't find volume at all. We found mass. And this is why I'm starting to understand that when you get to like higher level math, there's a whole lot more at play. Like it's not nearly as rigid. Let's try to imagine what this function would look like. And this is why I now realize we spent so much time trying to visualize these types of things. So let's just have what it looks like inside of our region. So x goes to 4, y goes to 3, OK? We said it would be 36 up here. No, 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 it would be 12 right there, right? And then it, it would do something like that, right? Can you envision that? Yeah. Like if now I'm going to rotate that, I'm going to write it like this. Okay, like that. Look, if you can envision this thing right here, that is the graph of our density. This is how the density is changing over that surface. Okay, but instead of doing area times height and finding volume, we did volume times density, in this case area times density, because area and density, area and volume of a lamina are the same thing, and now we found mass, and I think that's kind of cool, because God knows we're not just taking this class so that we can do calculus. Hopefully we're learning to apply it towards something that actually matters. Okay? Good? Quick little burp.